Over the course of the years, I've conducted a number of studies in different parts of the country. We've worked with more than 2,000 victims of, of hate crimes. These are victims from all kinds of walks of life, all kinds of different backgrounds in different parts of the country, but they're encountering hate incidents on a very regular basis. As many as three quarters of hate crime victims don't suffer isolated incidents. They're encountering it on a very regular, maybe even fortnightly, weekly, sometimes a daily basis, singled out specifically because of who they are. We've heard from people who've had to put up with feces being shoved through their letterboxes, people who've had their front doors spray painted with graffiti. We've worked with people who've been physically attacked with knives, with other weapons, who've been beaten up. It's been incredibly harrowing working with disabled people um, who've been tipped out of wheelchairs or encountering other forms of disabled harassment simply for being an easy target in the eyes of the perpetrator. These are problems that often aren't shared with the police or other agencies and victims are often suffering in silence. Well, we know that hate crimes don't occur in a vacuum, but they arise because of underlying prejudices, and we see those underlying prejudices at, at the fore in the context of certain headlines and on, in certain newspapers. So naturally, if we pick up newspapers which on a daily basis are stereotyping and increasing our sense of resentment and anger towards certain people, there will be a rise in hate crime because those prejudices, that sensationalism, that stereotyping, that anger, that resentment, it feeds that toxic climate that gives rise to hate. Many victims of hate crime that we've spoken to from different backgrounds and walks of life have referred to, to sensationalist media headlines. So often perpetrators might hurl an accusation at a victim of hate crime that has just been borrowed from a sensationalist media headline. For instance, uh, people with disabilities have often spoken to us and said, well, this, this, this labelling that goes on at the moment uh, in terms of being benefit scroungers and in terms of being false claimants, well, that narrative is used very much in the, in the targeting towards them. So the actual language of being a benefits cheat or a scrounger or being worthless, that's acted out in reality. And so they've drawn that conclusion that there's a direct relationship between media sensationalism and the, the interactions that they have with strangers on the street.